very strong in our culture here in North East Arnhem Land, in our culture, in our language, in our law. Some people have lost their language and it's sad, you know, and we, want to, we don't want to be a lost generation. In bushland near the school in northeast Arnhem Land's Yitakala community, young students take part in a ceremony. They're participating in Golta Rom or cultural lessons as part of the school curriculum. When the men were singing, the women were saying, be kind, um, be, look with kind uh, heart, share, care, uh, help. Take three steps if need friends with somebody. Yolnu ownership over the curriculum is central to the school's philosophy. It's found in the teaching in first language, the cultural education and in the leadership where there's a Yolnu co-principal and a school committee of clan groups from around the region. The successful programs that operate in the school operate because of a team. It's not any one person. Back in the classroom, cultural concepts are taught to the students through story. Behind the school's approach is the central importance of first language. Most students coming into the school have very limited experience in speaking English and even more limited experience in lit literacy in English. So we start with 90% of the content being delivered in first language. It is very important to teach Yungamata uh, in the class because um, that's, Yungamata is the first language that they bring to the school. We don't want to lose our culture, we don't want to lose our language because we want a young generation to carry on that language to the real world. At the heart of the focus on first language is the Literature Production Centre. Here we have um, a book display. It's a hive of activity where teaching resources from books to videos and flashcards are developed in Yolnumata. And the wall over here, you can see a Yolnumata alphabet. It remains one of the only school-based Indigenous Literature Production Centres, or LPCs, in the nation. The LPC is the heart of our school because it produces the resources of the, everything, of the Yungumata, of uh, Yungumata readers, the Yungumata. Well, we're going into apps now. The school has continued its bilingual approach to education since the 1970s, despite changes in government policies. In 2009, the Territory Government controversially ordered remote schools to teach English for the first four hours of the day. The ramifications of that have been, are still being felt today because what happened was that that took away um, a, a whole host of resources that had been put into bilingual education, like um, they had literature, literature production centres where texts were being made in first language. You had lots of people working um, and their, their skills as first language speakers being valued, bringing them into the schools and we actually lost a lot of that. I think some of that's starting to come back. These days the government is taking a different tack. Bilingual education is continuing to come up as a really strong um, priority for communities and I think we have to listen to that. Um, we have a very strong policy around local decision making um, and that's what's really directing um, how we're supporting schools at this present time. Alongside first language, Indigenous knowledge and culture is taught across all year levels. Senior Elder Bundark often takes students into the bush to learn about plants as part of the Learning on Country program. Bundark helps Yurungo to go out and look at plants and she explains to them what's the plant, what the plant is for and what we use them for. Yeah. 
The school and local ranger groups were instrumental in developing Learning on Country, which is now rolled out to 15 schools across the Territory and seen 40 students graduate high school. It offers vocational studies in conservation and land management and pathways to graduation and employment. There's also similar options in art at Yirikala's Bukulange Mulka Art Centre. The local people know what will work for their kids, whether it's for education, for health, and, and it's about really deeply listening to that and putting the resources into that that allow those things to happen. The next step, but the last step, the next step. Late last year when we visited, Kanisha Winnenguj was preparing to complete year 12. She'd undertaken a major study project in bush medicine, channeling her dream to become a doctor. Work with my teachers and work with you know, experts about you know, medicine, how to get you know, medicine and how to cook the medicine and make the medicine to heal you know, people. That's really her passion is to, to be able to um, walk as a both ways health practitioner in the, in the future and she's worked really, really hard. <laughs> Kanisha was one of four students who were the first to graduate with a university entry level score and among eight who finished year 12. Yolnu educator Vanessa Marika taught the group since grade five and she supported some to become the first ever students to study Yolnumata at year 12 level. I graduate here at Dirkala School and now I'm still here working for the new generation to just you know show them the right path the right way. She's also studying herself undertaking the remote area teacher education rate program which the territory government abandoned but has now revived. Now that I'm studying now the rate is you know lifting me more for that position to take and to become a teacher for the classroom, to run our own class. People like Vanessa, local people, local teachers, local educators that get results here. A few hours drive south from Yirikala lies the traditional clan lands of Gantalala. It's one of 35 homelands delivering education in the NT. <laughs> the school educates all year levels with a mix of local educators and fly-in, fly-out teachers. Last year, senior student Gapaya Munungur was set to graduate from year 12 and this year he began studying at university in Adelaide. I want to be a um, qualified teacher. I chose so that I can educate young children like both ways in English and young way so that they can balance the world. This small outstation has a long history of educators, including Gapaya's great-grandmother who pushed for a boarding school for remote students to be established here. A decade ago, the federal government announced it as the site of a multi-million dollar facility. But after Rio Tinto announced it would mothball its bauxite refinery in Nulumboy, the Territory Government overturned the Commonwealth's decision and built the boarding school in the mining town instead. They changed the plan, they changed everything, and they built a boarding school at Nulumboy, when that, that boarding school would have been built here at Kartalala. And we were all de devastated. Um, it broke mum's heart. One, two, three. While oh. disappointment still lingers, the Homeland School has rebuilt morale. <laughs> it's reinstated its program for senior students and supports preschoolers and families. This yeah. is a good place for kids. No drunks get away from town so they can learn properly. And we've doubled our enrolments this year and our attendance has shot up since Rosita has started. So we're really, it's a strong program in the homelands. 
and the kids are getting school ready. Meanwhile, there's widespread concern over differences between federal and territory government funding, where the Commonwealth funds schools based on student enrolment, but the Territory distributes those funds based on attendance. Critics say the model unfairly disadvantages remote schools where attendance is around 50 per cent. They've also raised questions about how unused funds are spent. So the idea that, you know, you only fund schools that, are, that have poor attendance more poorly or fund them less is absolutely ridiculous because what you're doing is perpetuating the, the problem that you're trying to fix. The Territory Government says the model is under review. What I'm signalling is, um, you know, we are looking um, at that, how that funding model currently works, um, but particularly how it's working for our smaller schools, which uh, the vast majority of which are remote. So while governments and their policies change over time, your new educators in remote Arnhem Land are unwavering. They say they're showing by doing, and when governments start to listen, that's when the true learning will begin. We here at Utakatla, we have power to bring these children anywhere and everywhere. And our motto is our children can achieve anything. I want them to be strong and go for what they really want to achieve in the future.